Next, we're going to go to the section of your page that talks about Johannes Achagem. He was born right around 1420, which is before the start of this period, technically, and he died in 1497. He was the most famous composer of the Franco-Flemish school in the last half of the 15th century and an honored singer, choir master, and teacher. Like many composers of this period, the details of his life are a little bit sketchy and lacking in a lot of detail. Again, not a lot of these historical details are written down. Um, he started his musical career as a chorister, which is a choir member, um, and was employed by the Anse Lieve of Rua Cathedral in Antwerp, which is now part of Belgium, um, in 1443 as a cathedral choir singer. Um, I feel like that'd be kind of cool that be, if being a choir singer was like your full-time job. I would be on board with that. Of course I would. Um, around 1452, he moved to Paris where he served as the maestro di cappella to the French court. So that would be like the person in charge of the choir as well as the treasurer of the collegiate church of um, Saint Martin at Tours. And in addition to serving in the French court, he held posts at Notre Dame in Paris and at Saint Benoit. Um, here's an aside. Um, so the Notre Dame Cathedral in Paris is probably the one of the most famous cathedrals in the entire world. Um, I have visited there. It is absolutely gorgeous. And I believe this was this was in 2019. They had just a catastrophic fire and they thought that perhaps the entire cathedral was going to have to come down and you might think oh, it's just a church who cares wow look up pictures of the notre dame cathedral in paris it is an unbelievably stunning work of architecture if you like buildings and architecture it's enormous it's gorgeous and it's very very old um and so many treasures of architecture and just of history um, actually were destroyed forever in that fire. They think they're going to be able to at least rebuild the structure of it enough for people to come back into the building safely. But at this point, um, they're still unsure about that. Anyway, um, he did not travel widely, um, but he's known to have visited Spain in 1470 as part of a diplomatic mission for the king, attempting to both um, convince Spain not to join an alliance with England and Burgundy against France and to arrange a marriage. Um, so you can tell that not only was he um, an important musician, but he had an important like, political job within the court of the king in France. He was not a prolific composer. That means he did not actually write all that much music. Many of his works have either been entirely lost or attributed posthumously to other composers. So what that means is music that we thought he wrote um, he didn't actually write. People just slapped his name on it, but they found out later that it wasn't his. It belonged to someone else. Posthumously means after he died, in case you didn't know that word. Um, reliably attributed, which means works that we know belong to him. Um, they include 14 masses, um, one piece called Credo, five motets, a motet chanson, and 21 chansons. That sounds like kind of a lot, but if that was your full-time job, that's all you did was write music, it's actually not a ton. Um, Akagam would sometimes add borrowed material in the lowest voice, um, and so what that means is he would take little fragments of songs that other people knew and put them in his music. And that might sound like cheating or stealing, but um, it actually was widely done during that time frame. And to be honest, it's done a lot these days too. Um, you hear fragments of other songs running through new songs. And it actually makes the songs, I think, a little bit more fun to listen to because there's an element of something familiar to you. Um, he was a renowned bass singer, which is the lowest voice part himself. Um, and so he used wide ranging and rhythmically active bass lines in his music. That's not something that was common, but because he was a good bass singer and because he liked to sing cool stuff in the bass line, he on purpose put cool bass parts in his music. Um, an indication of the renown in which Akagem was held was the number of laments written on his death in 1497. Among the most famous of the musical settings of these many poems is the Nymphe de Bois by Josquin Dupre. So all that's saying is um, 
you can tell how well he was loved by how many poems and pieces of music and pieces of literature were written in tribute to him when he died. Here's one fun fact about Ockham. He had strong opinions about just specific notes and was superstitious about having more than one or two F sharps in the upper voices, and he would put no B flats in the bass line at all. Um, and sometimes it made his music sound weird because sometimes those notes would have sounded kind of cool in the music, but he would not use them. He was very superstitious about like, what it meant to have that in the music or if he was bringing bad luck upon himself and actually b flat was considered the devil's note for quite a few centuries um and nobody would use that note in their music at all so um he held to those beliefs as well um next you're going to be doing some listening to the music of joss Kahn. <laughs> 